Hello, my name is Kamari Westby, and today we'll be doing a presentation on desert plants. Desert plants are also known as xerophytes, and basically xerophytes are plants that live in dry conditions where water is hard to come by. These locations include the Sahari Desert, the Mojave Desert, and any other desert across the world, you'll basically find desert plants. And in order for them to survive where water is scarce, they have to have these certain adaptations, which include root systems, leaves, water storage, and their stomata. So they have two different types of root systems. They have a hollow root system and a deep, long root system. This hollow root system allows them to capture water near the surface. And basically, in these environments, water is not good at sinking into the ground so that the roots can absorb them. So they have to have these hollow systems which can capture water at the, near the surface. And then the deep, long root systems, they basically get their water from underground. So water storage is key to these type of plants in these type of environments because they need to conserve their water in order to survive a long time. They do that by opening their stomata at night, which can serve, like I said, can serve water. It can also store carbon dioxide for photosynthesis during the day. And they also have, some of these plants also have succulent leaves. And basically what succulent leaves is, they're modified leaves that allow them to hold water in their leaves and their succulent leaves, basically. Um, they also have thick cuticles. Some of them have thick, or all of them have thick cuticles that contain like waxy, they're very waxy, so they're very thick. So it's hard for them, hard for the water to get lost in those leaves. Other adaptation of leaves include thorns, succulent leaves, like I stated earlier, shedding of leaves and hairy leaves. So the difference between desert plants and regular plants the main difference is there's stomata their stomata like i said opens during night to conserve water loss um and they also have a reduced number of stomata their leaves also is very very uh, small compared to regular plants and this reduced surface area allows them to decrease the water loss in transpiration and also in evaporation an example is this cactus right here. So they have thorns, which is like extreme, extremely reduced sized leaves that allows them to prevent water loss at a higher rate than regular plants. Because you know, in regular plants, their stomata opens during the daytime, which allows them to lose water at a higher rate. And the other thing is their their leaves are hairy. They have some of them have, have hairy leaves, which disrupt the airflow of the wind and this disrupting of the air the airflow of the wind causes them to like i said conserve water once again so the main thing of desert plants is to conserve water because they never know that when they're going to get water again because it, har it hardly rains in the desert the climate of the desert is extremely dry during the day, it is very hot, but the temperature can drop down drastically, making it very cold at night. Most animals and plants cannot survive in climates like this, so the ones that do have certain adaptations in order for them to thrive in the desert climate. People think that deserts are dead land and that not many things besides cacti, snakes, and sand inhabits it, but that is far from the truth. The Sonoran Desert alone is home to around 500 species of birds, 130 species of mammals, over 100 reptile species, and around 2,500 plant species. Deserts are not completely void of water 365 days of the year. It does precipitate around 25 centimeters each year, and in August, most of the rain is seen with about 1.3 centimeters total. There's no rain usually from December to March. Desert plants are unique in that they can hold in very little water available to them for a long period of time. The soil in the desert is 95% sandy soil. It has very little amounts of organic matter and nitrogen, but it is rich in calcium carbonate and phosphate. The soil is called aridus soils, which means dry soil in Latin. Aridus soils are found in arid climates known as desert climates. 
This type of soil has silt particles that allows some moisture to be retained. In order for plants to grow in the desert sandy soil, the plant must be able to last through drying cycles and they must like environments that cannot retain much moisture. Desert plants are highly diverse in some areas where there's more rainfall and vegetative cover. In the driest deserts, there is fewest diversity in living organisms. The Sonoran Desert is a desert that contains a high variety of plants from the, plant, the main three plant families. The Sonoran Desert has more than 2,500 different species of desert plant, which is more than any desert in the world. Plant Adaptations, C4 Plants One adaptation of desert plants is the idea of being categorized as a C4 plant. C4 plants alter the photosynthetic pathway in order to maximize CO2 assimilation rates. The C4 plants have up to 10 times more carbon dioxide assimilation rates compared to that of the most efficient C3 plants. The C4 plants are common in areas that are hot and arid, such as deserts, because they reduce water loss by decreasing photorespiration. The C4 pathway evolved over 45 times in 19 families of angiosperms, demonstrating one of the most widespread convergent evolutionary phenomena. The C4 pathway differs from photosynthesis of C3 plants in the fact that the C4 pathway, the light-dependent reactions in the Calvin cycle are physically separated and occur in two different cell types. The primary carbon fixation takes place in the mesophyll cells that surround the bundle sheath cells. This is where carbon dioxide from the, the atmosphere is fixed and turns into a four-carbon organic acid known as oxaloacetate. This step is performed by the enzyme phosphoenolpyruvate, also known as PEP carboxylase. From there, it turns into malate and is transported to bundle sheath cells where it is deep carboxylated to produce carbon dioxide, pyruvate, and NADPH. The CO2 can then be fixed by rubisco and converted into sugars by the Calvin cycle, exactly as it is in the C3 plants. By having the mesophyll cells continuously pump out carbon in the form of malate, the concentration of carbon dioxide is always higher than oxygen, making it so photorespiration is decreased and thus water loss is reduced, an important adaptation for desert plants. Plant adaptations, cam plants. Another plant adaptation to hot and desert climates are cam plants. These plants reduce photorespiration and water loss by performing the light dependent reactions and the Calvin cycle during different times of the day between day and night. CAM has evolved in over 30 plant families and occurs in over 20,000 species. CAM photosynthesis seems to have originated to utilize carbon dioxide under conditions where water availability is limited, such as in deserts. During nighttime, CAM plants open their stomata so carbon dioxide can diffuse into the leaves. The diffused carbon dioxide then undergoes carbon fixation in the same way as C4 plants, where carbon dioxide is turned into oxaloacetate by PEC carboxylase and then malate, or some other type of organic acid. The organic acid is then stored in vacuoles until daytime. During the day, cam plants do not open their stomata, but still photosynthesize by breaking down the organic acid that was stored in the vacuoles into carbon dioxide to utilize in the Calvin cycle. By opening their stomata only at night, cam plants avoid respiration and very water efficient as temperatures are cooler and humidity is typically higher at night both things that decrease water loss from leaves. Because of this, camp plants are well adapted to live in very hot and very dry environments, such as a desert. We're going to be talking about animals' adaptations. How have animals adapted in the environment to these desert plants? The animals of the desert had to adapt physiologically and anatomically to drought. This is important because the animals take part in the desert ecosystem, just like the plants do. Their metabolic water is almost completely obtained through their diets, since there's no free water around. Similar to xerophytes, most species are active at night. Diurnal species can be found active early in the morning or late at night. Pictured on the slide is a long-legged ant. They are similar to regular ants, but they have adapted with long legs to keep them elevated off the hot sand to retain body temperature. Their diets consist of the seeds from the desert plants. They make it their mission as a group to go out and get the seeds and bring them back to the rest of their colony. The mission could be completed thanks to their long legs. Human effect. What have humans done that has affected desert plants? Agriculture is one thing that has made an effect on this environment. Farming and the grazing of cattle left the sandy, loose soil to get picked up by the wind. This caused erosion. 
in populated areas, large parts of desert lands have been lost due to the installation of irrigation systems. These systems provide the soil with water, allowing for more plant growth, thus increasing agriculture in these areas, which then increases grazing and kills off the land. Vehicles that are used for off-roading not only kill small desert shrubs, but can cause irreversible damage to the habitat. Last but not least, humans have caused global warming that has increased drought in these deserts, decreasing with very little water these plants already had. These higher temperatures also increase the chance of a wildfire. These are our references.